Welcome to this video presentation on how to migrate to virtual tape backups with AWS Storage Gateway and Veritas Backup Exec. My name is Peter Baltazidis and I'm a Senior Product Manager with AWS. My name is Andy Spencer, Global Product Marketing Lead for Backup Exec. What we'd like to show you today in this presentation is how to take that physical tape infrastructure that you might still have and we're going to bring you into the 21st century with virtual tape backup infrastructure powered by Amazon Storage Gateway. A little bit about AWS Storage Gateway. Storage Gateway enables hybrid storage by connecting your on-premise applications with cloud-based storage. The great thing about Storage Gateway is it works with your existing applications and your existing backup workflows. It's secure and durable storage in AWS, and due to its hybrid architecture with on-premise storage, you have low latency access to frequently used data. Backup Exec's been around for about 25 years, and it is the powerful and flexible and trusted data protection solution that's aimed squarely at the mid-market and SMB users. With Backup Exec, you can really rapidly back up and recover all of your data in your infrastructure, whether it's on virtual machines, on physical machines, or in cloud workloads. And you're doing this all from a sim simple, unified management interface that's very easy to operate. Backup Exec has had a direct connector to the AWS Storage Gateway since version 15. Now let's talk about the features of migrating to virtual tapes. As I mentioned earlier, AWS Storage Gateway works together with Veritas Backup Exec and has done so since version 15. Veritas Backup Exec provides seamless and non-disruptive media lifecycle management for all of your organization's data, regardless of whether it's on virtual machines, on physical machines, or in cloud workloads. With Backup Exec, you're going to be able to migrate existing physical tapes to durable AWS storage. And I think this is really the key benefit of what we're talking about today, is that you don't need to change your backup and archiving policies or the ways that you're protecting your data today. In fact, you'll keep the same monthly and quarterly backup to tape processes that you have in place, but you're going to be simplifying your workflows dramatically because you don't have to push physical tapes off to an off-site location. And this data is highly secure because it's double encrypted by both Backup Exec and by AWS Storage. Another benefit of virtual tapes is that you can have an unlimited number of tapes that you can easily create or destroy. You can also have up to 1,500 tapes immediately accessible in a virtual tape library. Let's take a look at a typical tape infrastructure the way it looks today. So Backup Exec is connected via SCSI to the tape library. Backup Exec will then control the changer arm and it'll tell the changer arm to move an empty cartridge into one of the spare drives. Backup Exec will then write the data to the tape in, the, in that uh, library drive and when it's finished it'll ask the arm to eject the tape. And then once a day or however your organization's archiving policy is set up, uh, it, you'll eject the tapes from that tape library, you'll pack them into a bin, bring them out to the loading dock, put them onto a truck, and send them to an off-site uh, location for, for secure storage. Seems like an awful lot of work. Well, that's only when you're just doing the backups, because the restore, of course, that means you have to call up the company, you have to request the bin, you have to have them pack the tape into a truck and bring it back to your site, and that is a process that can take days or even weeks. Okay, so let's see how we can improve this process. With Storage Gateway, we can now eliminate the physical tape library and replace it with an on-premise installation of Storage Gateway. Storage Gateway has a VTL mode known as Tape Gateway. Storage Gateway or Tape Gateway can be connected to AWS. Tapes that you would have normally stored in the physical tape library are now stored as virtual tapes in S3. Tapes that you would have boxed up and sent off-site can now be archived in Glacier for even lower cost storage. Okay, let's dive into the demo. So for this demo, we've already installed Storage Gateway and we've already installed Backup Exec. We will go through a couple of the steps to configure these so that they work together in this environment. Once we've configured them, what we'll do is we'll go through, we'll create some virtual tapes in S3 via the Storage Gateway console, then we'll import those tapes into Backup Exec. We'll create a backup to one of the tapes through Backup Exec. Then we'll eject that tape, which will in turn archive the tape to Glacier. We'll retrieve the tape from Glacier. And then to close the loop, we'll import that tape back to Backup Exec so that we can restore from it. 
Okay, we're logged on to AWS. We're going to click on Storage Gateway underneath Storage. And we'll click Get Started. Once we click Get Started, the first thing we need to do is select the gateway type. In this case, we're going to select Tape Gateway because that's what we're doing. We're creating a tape library. We'll click Next. And then we need to select the host platform. If you're installing locally on-premise, you need to select either VMware or Hyper-V. If you're installing in the cloud, you can select Amazon EC2. For the purposes of this demo, we've already done that and installed it. Okay, so once we've installed Storage Gateway on one of these hosts, what we want to do is we want to grab the IP for, uh, for that host. We'll click Next and we'll enter in that IP right here. We'll click Connect Gateway. And then the next step is to activate the gateway. First, we'll select the time zone, then a gateway name, and a medium changer type. The medium changer type is dependent on the backup software. In this case, it's AWS Gateway VTL. Our online documentation has a full list of backup applications that are supported and their corresponding selection. Then we'll click Activate Gateway, and you can see in the green box, the gateway is now active. The next step is to assign local disks. Each tape gateway requires two disks, one for a local cache and one for an upload buffer. Now we've already created these disks when we were setting up the VM host or the EC2 host. In this step, what we're doing is we're assigning those disks to their respective duties. So what we'll do is we'll select one as the upload buffer, and we'll select the other one as the cache, and then we'll click Save. Okay, we can see in the green box that the disks are created successfully. We can see that the gateway is running, but we have zero tapes. So let's go ahead and create some tapes. We can click on Create Tapes, and this is where we create the tapes. Now we can select the number of tapes. In this case, we'll select 10 tapes. We'll select the capacity of 100 gigabytes each, and a barcode prefix, in this case, VER. And we'll select tapes. Now you only get charged for the amount of data that you write, not the capacity of the tapes. Okay, so we've, all, we've already set this up. We can see if we click on tapes, we have uh, tapes creating and now that they're available. And so we're done basically setting up the storage gateway. So what I'll do now is I'll turn it over to, uh, to Andy and Andy will step us through importing these tapes into Backup Exec. So now we're in the Backup Exec user interface, and you can see the storage gateway that we configured in the previous step. Backup Exec is speaking to the storage gateway now via iSCSI. Now you see a, a bunch of slots that are available uh, in the storage gateway. In order to fill those slots, we select the Slots button at the bottom there. So here you see 10 slots that were created in the previous step, and what we want to do is tell the storage gateway to read the contents of the slots. I'm going to select those first 10 slots, right-click on that, and then click Scan and Scan Now. Backup Exec will read the contents of those slots, and you can see those are the first 10 tapes that Peter had created in the previous step with the VER prefix. Now let's uh, have some fun. Let's do a backup. So click on Backup and Restore. Then for this time, let's do a one-time backup. One-time backup to tape should do it. We'll select our data and click, um, and then click on OK. So you see the data is backing up to the tape in the storage gateway. And fast forward and it's finished. And you see our job status is successful. So cool. All right, now we want to eject this tape so that we can offsite it, so to speak. We're going to go back to our storage tab and then right click on the tape that was just written. We'll just right click on that and then click on Export Media, Export Media Now. And now the tape's been ejected. Okay, let's go back to the Storage Gateway Console and let's see if we can find that tape which we just uh, ejected. If we scroll down, we can see the tape there. And we can see now that the status has been archived, which means it's been sent to Glacier. We can also retrieve the tape from Glacier. We can click on Actions, Retrieve Tape. We'll select a gateway that we want to retrieve the tape into. We'll select the same gateway that we've been using. And we'll click Retrieve Tape. 
We see the green box again telling us that we success successfully initiated a retrieval of that particular tape. We will refresh here and now we can see that the tape is in a retrieving status. And it'll take 24 hours to retrieve that tape. Let's fast forward. And again, now we can see that the tape has been retrieved. So now that the tape has been retrieved, let's go back to Backup Exec and let's re-import that tape. So now that that tape has been restored into the storage gateway, what we want to do is go into Backup Exec and say Import, Import Media Now on that slot. We'll scroll down to the bottom of the, of the screen and respond OK to that media request to ingest the tape into Backup Exec. And now the tape is back in slot zero and ready for a restore. And that's it. Again, in summary, what we did is we created some virtual tapes in Storage Gateway. We imported those tapes into Backup Exec. Andy showed us how to create a backup to one of those tapes. Then we ejected the tape, which in turn sent the tape to Glacier. Then back in the Storage Gateway console, we retrieved the tape from Glacier back into the virtual tape library. We re-imported that tape into Backup Exec in order to start a restore process. We're hoping that this demo illustrates how it's possible to migrate from physical to virtual tape backups. In summary, let's look at some of the benefits of migrating to virtual tapes. One of the key benefits, in my opinion, is that you have a seamless and a non-disruptive replacement for your existing backup workflows. In other words, you can continue to use the exact same backup application that you're using today, and you can continue to use the same backup lifecycle policies that you're using today. You can also reduce maintenance costs by eliminating that physical tape infrastructure, and you can free up that space. And you have all of the benefits of AWS, and the AWS Backup Exec combined solution offers you low cost with simple licensing and predictable storage costs, AWS security with military grade encryption, durability with 11.9's durability, and importantly, accessibility. All of your tapes and all of your data is available online. Never again will you have to fetch a tape from some off-site storage facility, and never again will you have to juggle and shuffle a physical tape. So thank you for your time. For more information on how to get started, please visit aws.amazon.com slash storage gateway. And for more information about Backup Exec, visit us at backupexec.com, where you'll find a free 60-day trial version of Backup Exec.